Recently, I asked Smith Plays Pokemon if I could react to his video on simulating 1 million battles to find the best trainer. And I did because he said yes. And the footage got corrupted. And I got really sad because I was like, man, that was a really good video. And I couldn't redo reaction because I already know who won. But recently, he also uploaded a video simulating 1 million Pokemon battles with all the teams being the exact same level to make the whole thing more balanced. And I haven't seen this one. And I'm streaming it this time. So even if the footage gets corrupted, I can just get the stream. What this does is it puts all the trainers up against each other. I, it'll be explained. I took every gym leader, elite four and champion and simulated over 1 million Pokemon battles to see who is the strongest. To Which is insane by the way. Possible, we've made all trainer Pokemon level 50. And today we're going to determine objectively who has the best team in the Pokemon franchise. This excites me because I've always been a fan of watching AI in video games fight against each other. Like when I used to play Fallout, and Oblivion and even Bioshock, I would try to get to get the little AI creatures to battle against each other to see who's the strongest. I've always loved videos that show video game AIs just fighting against each other with no player interaction whatsoever. So I think it's just really interesting to see who wins, but also like how they fight each other at the same time too. We're gonna start things off at the bottom of our ranking, looking at the 10 worst trainers. Now the 10th lowest ranking team was Brawly from Pokemon Emerald, who is- He's the 10th lowest rank at- Wait, Brawly, really? Cause he's, I mean, he's not a first trainer. He has like decent levels for a second gym trainer. He has like not bad mons either. Actually ranking lower than his gym one junior, Roxanne. And that's really embarrassing. You're worse than Roxanne. How do you lose to Roxanne? It's the nose, isn't it? Fallout NPC war videos. That was it. That's what I used to watch. Oh my God. I'm so glad there's someone else. This is the stuff I used to love 12 years ago. Veteran Rangers versus Legion people in Fallout New Vegas. And just watching them fight each other. Okay, sorry. I was getting distracted, but that's the kind of stuff that I absolutely loved watching. Brawly is a notoriously difficult fight in Emerald. So I was really surprised to see his team rank so low. But a lot of this bad performance came down to only having fighting damaging moves and wasting turns using Focus Punch. Wait, he has, hold on a second. He has Focus Punch in Gen 3? I don't think I've ever seen him use it. I, I don't think he's ever gone off before. But to be fair, he had a Meditite with Focus Punch. If that works, it would have gone great. Wait, Meditite only has Focus Punch as an attack and move? That's crazy. But also they have screens, which is pretty advanced for a second gym. You'd think it'd do a little bit better when it sets up screens and then maybe it gets the Makuita in. There's not that many ghost type trainers out there, so you think it'd be a little bit higher. Using bulk up to set up would help him win, but his coverage just put him in a really bad spot. Now, following sure. that interesting upset, number nine actually goes to Black and White 2's second gym leader, Roxy. It just what is it with the second gym leaders being so weak and feeble and pathetic and feeble? Seems that with all the levels even, trainers could now not rely on inflated levels of being a later gym to avoid the bottom 10. Roxy's bad performance really came down to having two poison types in a series where poison is just not that good. At number eight, we have Brock shame. from Pokemon Red and Blue. And this is oh, completely unsurprising given that his two four times weaknesses and Oh my god, that moveset is abysmal. Tackle, Screech, and Bide on Onyx. Jeez. With no stab moves are about as unoptimized as the browser you're probably using. Today's Wait a minute, that sounds like a transition. Opera GX is here to help with that. Now, number Let's seven, go! we have Black and White's Gym 1 Fire Variant Chili. If you look at. Oh, he's doing a smart thing. He's implementing the sponsor message into the actual video. So if you want to keep watching the video, you have to watch. You can't just skip the sponsor. Smart his guy. Team, it's clear that he could also have performed better if he just improved his learn sets. See, just like how Pokemon only have four move slots, your PC has a finite amount of resources. And Massively most done, sir. Default browsers hog these, which can hurt your gaming performance. Opera's GX control feature lets you limit the amount of CPU or RAM you're willing to no let way. The browser use. Now, our number six spot sees Black and White's water variant. Wait, that's actually a really good feature. Hold on. That's, that's really good. Yes. And just like this repetitive team choice, Default browsers can be super boring. With Opera, you can install oh, custom right. GX mods that spice up your experience. This Pokemon Emerald theme gives you an awesome dedicated wallpaper, a custom it moves. browser, background music, custom keyboard sounds, and noises for opening and closing tabs. Any That's really cool. Can be toggled on or off in the mods menu, and this is just one of many. 
Wait, am I being advertised to you and it's working? Themes in the GX store. It's as impressive as the number five spots upset is surprising. There's also GX Corner, which acts Wait, like was a that? digital gaming magazine. It gives you offers for free games, news on upcoming ones, and even scopes crazy deals like this GTA 5 for $10. Best that of feels all, crazy. Apple has a tool to import your history, bookmarks, and cookies so it makes leaving your boring browser incredibly easy. Follow the top link down below and download Opera GX today. Now, our Damn, they just shat on Chrome there. Our fifth lowest ranking trainer is actually Katie from Scarlet and Violet. In this makes sense. I assume that you can't harassalize during the simulations, right? All the teams were balanced. I was expecting power creep to place the later generational leaders up quite a bit higher. But this it is makes the first sense. of many coming examples where that's not potentially true. Now, Casey as a whole just isn't a very impressive gym leader. was the bottom trainer in the first ranking video we did where team levels were unadjusted. And it turns out his spot was mostly due to the levels as Faulkner actually only ranked fourth worst today. Congrats. Only fourth worst of every single trainer in the franchise. Well done, Faulkner. You're only the fourth worst. You have gone up three entire spots out of hundreds of trainers, I would assume. Well, actually not hundreds. It's just the gym leaders and all the important battles, but still pretty good result for Faulkner there. Congratulations, Faulkner. We're, we're so proud of you. With an evolved Pidgeotto, his team was able to take a lot of fights over early grass and bug types, and Mudslap even allowed him to get some wins over Brock. At the bottom third spot, we have Black and White's final Gym 1 variant, the grass leader, Sillin. Viola of X and Y then held on to her second lowest spot. All right, place your guesses right now. What is the weakest team in the entire franchise? What is number one worst? I, I'm going to say, I'm going to go for a crazy one. I'm going to say it's Bugsy from Gen 2 because he has two mons that don't do anything essentially. And then he just has the sight there, which... Once you equalize the level, it's not that strong. I'm going to say it's Bugsy. But the title of worst team no. of all time actually goes to Black and White 2's first gym leader, Sharon. Now give Dude, he has a sound move and everything. That's a shocker. His normal type affinity. This actually makes a lot of sense. It's 16,000 losses. Oh my god. Imagine waking up for work one day and you're like, all right, let's see if I lose 15,000 more times. Here we As go, Sharon guys. Sharon has no advantageous matchups to rack up wins on. However, Sharon's one redeeming performance came from a 99 to 1 win rate against a trainer ranking 40 placements higher than him. Or nice. Gen 2 Ghost Team could only damage Sharon through the use of Curse and Dream Eater. And because Lillipop's vital spirit blocks hypnosis, if Oh, that's right. It can't even be put to sleep. Damn, Morty's having a rough go of it. Morty's Haunter was unable to land Curse before going down to Pat Rat and Lillipop's super effective bites. Lillipop so embarrassing. come out and wall Morty's Gengar for the win. But now that we've seen the bottom 10 trainers, it's time we look at the rest of this list. We're going to make our way up the ranking, highlighting upsets and noting the best and worst gym leaders for their order in the game. We've also added the gen... I think we're going to get an upset in Whitney's Mill Tank's going to be low ranks, right? Really low ranks. I reckon, you know what? That Gen 7 Psyche type gym leader, I feel like she's going to be crazy high. Seven trial captains, the Gen 9 professors, Toro and Seda, and... Ooh, the professors are in this. Okay. I mean, they're going to be super high. I mean, have their paradox and they're all a level equalized to everyone. I mean, have a false team of six. It's pretty good. Even the new Gen 9 DLC characters. Oh, dude. No, there's no way. Kieran's the strongest. 100% Kieran's the strongest. Ooh, but they're all in single battles, and some of the teams are made for double battles, so that'll probably make a, some kind of effect on Having that. Having the levels at 50 has completely changed the ranking, and you are going to be shocked to see who the strongest trainer is now. Nah, it's Kieran. You should subscribe. So of 168 trainers, Emerald's first gym leader, Roxanne, places just above Brawly at 158. Next 15,000. Previously was the top performing first gym leader with level 20 Pokemon, and 156 then sees Johto's Bugsy. Now in okay, so he didn't, he didn't do that. The first ranking video we did where levels were not capped, Johto leaders were consistently the worst performing of their respective gym, mostly due to having the lowest levels. But when the levels become even, we already start to see how spread this ranking becomes, as at 155, we have Emerald Watson, who is the lowest ranking gym 3 leader. Watson lost what? every single- Watson doesn't really have a whole lot going for him, though. I mean, he has Shockwave, but it's not like he has t or anything like that. Against Brock and Roxanne, along with Rourke, Jasmine, Erica, and Koga. It's also crazy to see the Gen 3 leaders, Brawly and Watson, doing worse than Gen 1 and 2's Bugsy, Misty, Surge, and Whitney. From here, we had Lenora, Hala, then Brassius, while at 151... 
Wait, hold on. Hala's here? I guess we're not giving Z moves, right? Rourke would claim the title of strongest first gym leader in the series. Spot 50 would be claimed by Misty, followed by Grant, Lieutenant Surge, Gardenia, and Berg. At 145, we would then see Nessa taking the title of strongest second gym leader. Nessa Let's go, Nessa! She deserves it. Wait, she has a Goldie? Never mind, she doesn't deserve it. In an overall very solid performance, with two noteworthy matchups, seeing her sweep Flannery and the Gym 7 leader Blaine 100 to nothing. Nessa's most impressive win, however, was getting a single victory against Hop's Champion Cup team. <laughs> what? No way. Goldine, Arrokuda, and Dreadnaw were able to beat Hop's Inteleon, Dubwill, Corviknight, Pinchurchin, <laughs> and Snorlax. That is what? Oh, Hop, you're so embarrassing, man. This is why you got depression when you kept losing. You said you were as good as your brother. Oh, it's so sad. I love Hop, too. As insane as not clicking the subscribe button. Now, next at 144 is the lowest ranking Gym 6 leader, and this is Jasmine of Johto. Jas Damn, the wait, the lowest rack. The lowest rank in six gym, 13,000 losses. Her team is not great. It's got two Magnemites and a Steelix. You'd think the Steelix might be able to hard carry, but it's gonna be missing those iron tails all over the place. She didn't do anything terribly wrong, but her problem was in the fact that she also didn't do anything exceptional. Two Magnemites- She didn't do anything right. Been Magneton. Wait, hold on. Can I ask a quick question? That Steelix, is that moveset correct? That sunny day? Does it really have sunny day? Why does Steelix have sunny day? Is it to reduce the power of water type moves? It's a bit silly considering it boosts the power of fire type moves and steel is, ooh, wait, wait. Oh, hold, hold on guys, wait, steel's, steel's weak to fire. <laughs> I just remembered guys. Had she evolved them, simply held her back more than her steel. Normally it doesn't have that, really? <laughs> nope, it definitely gets, why? Wait, Matt, Jasmine, what are you, do, do you have that in the remake as well? Did you learn some sense? Oh, you have Sandstorm now. Wow. Shocker, it took you like 17 years to grow a, a brain cell. Steelix could help her. Here we see Alima, Erica, and then 141 sees yet another crazy upset, this time with Black and White's Bryson. Taking the Bryson seems not that great. ...of lowest seventh gym leader, this really came down to Ice just not being always that great. Outside of normal and a single water move, Bryson... I know why Ice isn't that good. I've watched a Wolfie VGC video on that. Since Ice moves are relatively weak. And this just couldn't make up for his horrible defensive typing of three pure Ice types. Now the bottom tiers of these results are just absolutely insane. The title of worst performing Elite Four member in the history of Pokemon is going to Agatha of Red and Blue. With a that's a little surprising. I mean, it's red and blue, so they don't have good moves. If you look at these move sets, it's got Confuse Ray, Nightshade, Hypnosis, and Dream Eater. And then on Gengar, we've got Toxic and Confuse Ray. Just the move sets of Gen 1 is like if a child made the move sets. It's like Jinichi Masuda went home to his cousins or uh, nephews or something like that and said, Hey, can you just like click some random buttons on this PC and we'll just use that as the moveset? I appreciate that, thanks. Golbat and Arbok, her team is off to a pretty bad start. But because there are no strong Gen 1 ghost moves, her two Gengars were left to rely on landing Dream Eaters, one of which does not even know the move Hypnosis. <laughs> That's such a good way to make it deep. What are they doing? They had to sit there and program that. What were they thinking? Elite five team of Pokemon performed worse than every other trainer we're about to look at. Like Koga of Red and Blue. Despite claiming the 139th spot of worst fifth gym leader, he was still able to edge out Agatha with this team. Next up, we have Fantina, Price. Price, Ramos, and Elisa of Black and Wait, Price was kind of high, considering the Price is a little dog water as well. Elisa also has a decent team for an electric type gym what? leader. Elisa is claiming the title of worst fourth gym leader, but when you consider she still ranks above a gym five, six. Wait, wait, Elisa got the worst fourth gym leader. Seriously? Wait, I thought Erica was, oh, er wait, is Erica the fifth? No, Erica's fourth gym leader. We saw an Erica previously, didn't we? Unless I'm, unless I'm imagining things. I thought there was an Erica previously. Also, <laughs> worst gen, worst fourth gym leader is still better than elite four member, which is hilarious. And a seventh gym leader, which is also hilarious. Seven and E4 member, it's really Really not that bad of a placement. Elisa did good where she could, but she was mostly held back by her awful rock trainer matchups. Now, just edging out price, Chuck would claim spot 132, followed Chuck's pretty high for having two mons. Kofu, Skyla, Clay, and then Blaine. Next is Morty, who would go on to take title of third strongest Johto leader. Morty actually did quite well, often punching above his weight class, but ironically, it was the. Considering the moveset that Morty have, 
has, I'm surprised he got that high. Super early gym leaders with normal types that tripped him up and held him back. Flannery and Karenna were next, and then they have a placement that I am extremely proud about, and that is Whitney. While she's only- Okay, Whitney got a lot higher than I imagined, considering she has two freaking Pokemon. Taking the title of third strongest third gym leader, this is a crazy performance. The only two leaders of her third gym tier that topped her were Kabu of Sword and Shield and Iono of Scarlet and Violet. Whitney's team debuted That's in power 2000, creep. and this means she was stronger than every third gym leader up until 2019. Damn, maybe there's something to this meme then. I've always said that Whitney's not that hard because you could just get the Machop and then he easily beat her because the Machop is so good. But hey, maybe it's, there's something to the meme. And with nothing but a deadweight Clefairy in her legendary mill tank, Whitney- Oh man, that mill tank's moveset is so good though. Stomp Attract, Milk Drink, and Rollout is a ridiculous he moveset. The title of strongest third gym leader for 19 years. All that mill tank is a slayer of souls. It's kill counts in the millions. It's KD ratio is ridiculous. It would dominate the Call of Duty online lobbies. That power creep, and she managed to hold on with basically a single Pokemon. Now, she may only be taking spot 126, but today, I am honored to present Whitney with the title of longest reigning trainer in her respective heat. And if that's not impressive well enough, done. to this day, Whitney holds on to the title of the highest ranking team with two Pokemon. Whitney is an absolute legend, Let's move on to Iris, who is What's really bad, claiming the title. Really? Iris is a Haxorus, though, doesn't she? Lowest ranking eighth gym leader. Iris is followed by Kabu, then Nanu, Norman, Grand Trial Olivia, and then Red and Blue's Giovanni at 120. Now, Ruby and Sapphire's Wallace. I really want Kieran to win now. I don't know why. Maybe it's recency bias, but I really would like Kieran to win this entire thing. Title of third worst final gym, while Iris's doppelganger Drayden takes fourth worst. Why is the anti haxorus agenda out in full force today? What has happened? Here, it's actually Lance's Elite Four team from Red and Blue, which the three Dragonites. I should note actually did worse than both the Gen 1 Bruno and Lorelei. Next is Platinum's Maylene, followed by Emerald Sydney, claiming third worst. Sydney did better than Gen 1 Lance? Four member. At 114, we have Sabrina, who will take the title of the strongest Kanto gym leader and objectively the fourth best team in red and blue. And I should also mention that this is within the Gen 9 system. So it's not even like Sabrina has wonky Gen 1 mechanics to prop her up. Her Psychic types are just team that of good. Venomoth, Mr. Mime, Kadabra, and Alakazam is actually just that solid. Yeah, it's great. Are you kidding me? Oh, the Lance's team has two Dragonairs and a Dragonite in first gen? Is that right? Yes. So no, it's not It's not three Dragonites. That's the champion team from Generation 2, Spot right? 113 would then see Valerie, followed by Ew, Valerie leader team, Crystal's Claire, and Tate and Liza taking 110. That's impressive considering Tate and Liza are supposed to be a double battle team, and I assume that they did all these in singles. Takes 109, and crazily, Red and Blue's Bruno takes 108. So with two Onyx, Bruno is often considered to be the easiest Elite Four member of all time. Which he is, absolutely. But our results show him actually beating out Lance. Okay, well, he has a hit on Chan, I guess, but Ice Punch and Thunder Punch and Gen 1 are special, but not in the Gen 9 system that they're using for this video. So it's actually a physical move. And high jump kick, always good. Focus energy, that might crit at some point eventually. I don't know. Never has for me. Kiawe is next, followed by another stellar performance from Iona, claiming strongest third gym leader. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, a streamer did better than the Dragon Master of Kanto. The next streamers catching dubs. Love to see that. Is Koga's Elite Four team, followed by Alistair, Phoebe, Olympia, Lorelei, and then Mallow taking spot 100. At spot number 99, we see another huge upset. But this time, it's in comparison to the previous rankings where levels were as they are in the games. Falling 43 places, X and Y's Ice Leader Wolfric relied on high levels to claim a spot above 18 Elite Four members. Ah, uh, see, that's his problem right there. But when He's using a bomber he snow. level capped, we see that his team is not near as dominant as the- Also, having a level 56 on a final gym leader team, just X 
Jackson Y is freaking weird, man. Previous video suggested. Next is Byron, and then Swords Fighting Leader B claims the title of strongest fourth gym leader. Here we have. She's the fourth gym leader, and she's that high. That's insane. Mont, Gordy, Will, Crasher, Wake, Nina, Glacia, and Candice of Platinum. At spot 89, we see Black and White 2's Marlin, followed by Juan, Grusha, Crystal Bruno, Rhyme, so Crystal Bruno is high. Please, Piers, Opal, Acerola, and Sudden Moon's Lena at 80. 79 sees Lena's high as well. Wow. Nerf. Oh, we got into the positive KD ratios finally. We're not a negative Nancy anymore. We're positive KDs. By Black and White's Caitlyn and Marshall, then Hapu, Drasna, and Karen. At 73, Pokemon Sword. Karen is really high too. This is surprising. Some of these are really surprising Melanie me. Melanie claims the title of strongest six gym leader. And what I love about this is it proves that not all ice leaders are bad and shows what one can do if given an actually good. <laughs> not all ice leaders are bad. You might be good if you have other types other than ice. Actually, to be fair, this, this whole setup is not really that good. In fact, even the moveset is not that. How did you get this high? What are you doing here? I feel like she got lost and accidentally round up really, really high on the list. Team with solid coverage. This placement is especially impressive given that she does not have her Gigantamax Lapras. To make things as fair as possible, we did not include any gimmicks like Mega Evolutions, Z moves, yeah, that makes sense. Max, or Terraforms. Now from yeah. here, Bead takes the 72nd spot, followed by Grimsley and then Malva. So beautifully and perfectly fitting, we then see Blue's Venusaur led champion Ooh. team take spot number. Oh man, it kind of makes me sad that Venusaur is the lowest 69. one. 69. Now, as an old gen fan, I'm sad to see the Soar get the spot of lowest ranking champion. Dude, 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 look at that move set. Look at those moves. You should feel lucky that Alakazam even got psychic on this move set. When you look at the learn sets of Blue's champion. Oh, <laughs> the Rhydon, man. Oh, it's so sad to look at. I love Rhydon. I really like Rhydon's sprite in Gen 1 too. But my god, Leah Tail with Beauty Attack and Horn Drill makes me want to. Sudoku myself. Team, you quickly realize what a disadvantage the guy is at. Wickstrom takes 68, then Chantal, Rika, Blues Boss Toys led We passed 10k victories as well! I'm, I'm just tracking by the thing on the left there. And Blastoise is- How is Charizard the, always the best? Beast Champion Cup Team, Tulip, Hollow's E4 Team, Kahili, and then Peony. Now Flip takes spot 59, while Rayhan's Champion Cup Team claims 58. Rayhan's Champion Cup Team is 58, and we have still not seen his Gym Leader Team. This this is actually the only what? case where a trainer's earlier team outperformed a supposed higher form of themselves. Now what? Oh, I guess that doubles teams are just better than singles teams, which makes sense. I mean, Wolf Wolfie VGC being out here being the greatest Pokemon player of all time. How does Wolfie keep winning the biggest tournament of all time? How does he do it multiple times? He's just the GOAT. Now Hop's Rillaboom Champion Cup team takes 57, followed by Blue's final placement of his Charizard team. Not the placement I was hoping for the man, but I'm not surprised. Now Bertha takes spot 55, followed by Champion Cup Nessa, and then Olivia's E4 team. Carmen, who is a new Gen 9 DLC character, is going to claim 50 52 with her Blueberry Academy. That's a pretty high spot for the first Indigo Disc team. At There's a lot of Indigo Disc teams. One, we have Hop Cinderace team, followed by his Inteleon one. If wow, they're right next to each other as well. Larry then takes spot 49. Now from here, I would like to take a moment and cover the top five strongest gym leaders in the Pokemon franchise. At number okay. five, we have Sword and Shield, what? fifth gym leader and fairy type user Opal. At it just goes to show that even if you slow down in your old age, you can still be the best of all time. At number four, proving that power creep isn't everything, we have Sinnoh's final gym leader, Volkner. Gen 8 strikes again, taking the number three spot Melanie? With ice user Melanie of Shield 6 Gym. Tulip of Scarlet and Violet claims the title of second strongest gym leader, and even beating his own champion cup team. At 48, Rayhan claims the title of strongest gym leader in the Pokemon franchise. That makes sense. He is a very scary match. But you're probably wondering how Rayhan's team of four, which was designed as a double battle format. How is Rayhan's team of four, which was designed as a double battle format, able to beat his better equipped singles designed final team? Able to defeat is better. Yeah, you heard him say it. If you look at the data, the single word that can explain this phenomenon is... Uh, single word. Okay, uh, I'm thinking... Okay, it's just a one word. I'm thinking, um, Rainforest... Uh, it's just one word. How many letters? How many letters? Like seven letters, maybe? Like seven letters. Uh, champion. Strength. Courage. Determination. That's it. Determination. Actually, synergy. No. Okay, I wasn't, I wasn't even close. Rayhan's Champion Cup team places in a boat order of where the other Champion Cup team members were placing. This team is 
barely well balanced with a Draught Torkoal that knows Solar Beam, a Thunder Rain Dance Gudra, a Sunny Day Fire Blast Turtonator. There's just so much weather going. There's way too much weather on this. Constantly changing the weather every single Pokemon seems like a terrible idea because you waste a turn every single time. This is the most anti-synergy team on the planet. Storm Flygon and his insanely fearsome Duraludon. Now, this is a team that has amazing coverage, but the first issue is that all the teams we're looking at by this point have coverage too. We're past the point of single type gyms and having a team with a bunch of different weather setters is just going to hold you back. But what makes what was Right Hand thinking when he built this team? Right Hand's gym leader team so good is that he's actually got a proper weather team. His Gigalith comes out to set Sandstorm with Sandstream. Give Game Freak are cowards. They make one weather team in the entire franchise and never look at it again. Actually, that might be wrong. That might be a lot more than one. An instant 50% special defense boost. If that ever is to end, Sandaconda has a similar ability which helps keep Sandstorm up. Better yet is all of Rayhan's Pokemon are unaffected by Sandstorm's chip damage. So you've got a very cohesive weather set combined with the power of ground type. Combining that with a solid Flygon and Duraludon's amazing typing just makes for an incredibly synergistic team. Rayhan was able to dominate where he had he should have had a rain team if it was going to be the most accurate to the uk that's what he should have had there was a storm so strong yesterday that it knocked it just knocked my gate straight off its hinges and now i just have half of a gate there you go see just straight up blew it off its hinges it is dead now i need to get a new gate how do you build gates can i can i build a brick wall had an advantage but still scrape up wins in nearly all adverse situations like for example rayon was able to edge out at least one win against every trainer <laughs> i'm gonna build a boulders gate in our top 10 and his most noteworthy achievement was claiming 13 wins against the strongest trainer in the series what? Really? Got a massive 13 dubs? I don't remember exactly how many battles are uh, pitted against every individual person, but is it 50? Because there's a million battles that have been simulated, so I would assume it's 50 battles against each individual person to make up the mill. Along with Whitney, Rayhan is in my top three for most impressive performances. Hundreds? There wow. There is still one more performance to come that outshines them. Now, continuing on, we see Marnie, Aaron, Drake, Cybold, Alistair, Lucian. Hold on, what is Cybold? Let's not skip over Cybold. What is Cybold doing here? What is he even doing here? Bro thinks he's a gym leader. Bro thinks he's an Elite Four member, actually. Never mind. Bro is not an Elite Four member. He doesn't even exist. Trace and Mulane takes Trace. Spot. What was Trace doing here? He's not part of the group. He's not part of the gang. For 40. Really interesting here is Trace's placement, who is Blue's modern day counterpart in Let's Go. Just <laughs> in case you didn't know. <laughs> There's so many people who are like, whomst the fuck of is Trace? Despite being conceived 20 years apart and only sharing a single Pokemon, as far as champion placements go, they rank right next to each Oh my God, he doesn't have an, he has a mega evolution. I guess he doesn't have a mega evolution in the simulations, but still, come on. Not so surprised that Trace's improved learn set would rank higher than blue, but it's crazy that they are back to back placing champions. Three moves, man. I will never get over that. Three moves. And right after that, we see our third weakest ranking champion, this time going to Lance from Gold, Silver, and There's Crystal. the three Dragonites. Pretty good ranking for him. Lance underperformed heavily in the first ranking video due to his poor level cap. But with an even playing field, we see the triple Dragonite team in a position that gives you a better idea of his true power. And look, he can use Hyper Beam three times. As expected, Lance did well in any and every case where a trainer did not have an ice move. Now, 38 sees the placement of Carmine's Loyalty Plaza team and then almost- This is from the Teal Mask DLC, right? So Carmine from the Teal Mask did better than Carmine- Carmine? Carmine from- they had a good disc. Did Carmine get weaker the more that she went on? Slight clockwork, it's Emerald's champion Wallace taking- Ooh, is that the first? No, it's not the first champion. It's not even close to the first champion. But still, Wallace was kind of low down. Spot. What's cool about this is so far, the series has seen each generation introduce a stronger champion. What's going to be extremely disappointing, however, is the number 36 spot going to trainer Red's- Wow, when the levels are equalized, Red ain't so good. It looks like he just spammed rare candies and called it a day. No team synergy from Mr. Red over here using a Pikachu ass at level 81. Silver team. Now, as a Gen 2 fanboy, this hurts my soul, but I'm not surprised in the slightest. Red placed fourth in the last video, but all he really had going for him is one of the highest level caps in the series. Red's the kind of trainer that if Pokemon were real, there'd be Reddit threads all about him talking about how he's overrated and not that good. Once he was put on an even playing field, the cracks in his team started to burst. His starter- 
Oh, wait, there is Reddit threads about him. It doesn't even have to be real. There's Reddit threads about everyone. <laughs> ...are good, but they don't have exceptional learn sets. Snorlax and Espeon are also just fine, while his light ballless Pikachu can't do anything to the heavy hitters of the top 40. For fourth strongest trainer, this is a big fall for Red, but we are going to do another video where we use the absolute best teams of every trainer rather Ooh. than their introductory one. So okay, sure, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for that one. I love watching these videos, so I'm down for that. If you're looking for the dead Red Redemption, you should definitely subscribe. And number thirty. That is the third sub plug. Fine. Oh, I already am subscribed. <clears throat> All right. Well, never mind. Hey, Hassel, how's it going? He's Hassel, followed by Steven's champion team, immediately followed by his Emerald Final boss team. Once levels were yeah, adjusted, that makes sense. They're basically the same team, right? They're actually the exact same teams with only two different moves. So, oh. I find it very <laughs> satisfying that almost identical teams would have the post-game Steven topping out his canonically weaker champion team. Next, yeah, exactly. It's the same thing. So that proves the scientific method makes sense. Next up is Ends Reshiram team, followed by Poppy, and then. What? What? A five-year-old? And Zekrom. Okay, a five-year-old is one space away from the top 30 in the entire franchise of 20 however many years of creating the games. A five-year-old is right in there. Here, it is now time to look at our top five highest ranking elite. She's nine years old. Okay, that's not a big difference. <laughs> four members. At number five, we have Alistair from Sword and Shield. Number four sees Lucian's psychic team from oh. Platinum. Malay Damn, hey, Lucian popping off a little bit. The Sun and Moon team claims spot number three. And at number two, we see Hassel's Dragon, Scarlet, and Violet team. And ladies and gentlemen, that means the number... Red was 10 years old. If po Wait, Poppy's nine? Pop no, wait, Poppy's not nine. Did Poppy have like a growth problem or something? I just Googled Poppy and I, I don't know what I expected to happen. God damn it. Number one spot and strongest Elite Four member in history is actually steel type user pop come on that's a that's a nine-year-old no it's in game dialogue i don't care it's fake it's not real it didn't happen i've decided i'm gonna gaslight everyone now it's a, it's not real now at 29 we have black and white's champion alder followed by the notorious gita then crispin from the new dlc he is really high honestly and finally at 26 we have diantha I want okay to diantha's placement here as amongst many players even i tend to hate on her for being a weak champion but I don't think she's that bad of a champion. Like, she has some pretty weak mons, but I mean, she got a Tyrantrum, a Mega God of War. I dislike Diantha for many different reasons. You dislike Diantha because you feel like she's not a good champion. I dislike Diantha because she's just shit character and doesn't do anything in the entire game. Given the data we've seen here, I think We're I not the same. at least acknowledge that she's better than I give her credit for. Diantha outplaced champions Blue, Trace, Lance, Wallace, Steven, Alder, and Gita. And I should clarify, this doesn't mean she is objectively a hard boss, as difficulty is also determined by the context of the game you're in. Well, she also has a good draw. Diantha a baddie, though. Nah, it's true. Diantha feels easy to a lot of players because of mega evolutions and the level you come in to fight her at. What this does tell us in a vacuum is that Diantha actually has- She actually- look, I mean, look at this team. This team is not bad. Sword Stance X is a poison jab and Flying Press is good coverage. All these Pokemon have good coverage. The God of War is crazy, has insane coverage, just hits everything in the game. This is not a bad time. I, mean, I don't know why Gower Geist is here. I don't know why Bro thought he was invited to the game. A fairly well-constructed team. Now, starting out the top 25, we have Penny's team of six evolutions. This is followed by DLC Lacey's fairy team, and then Getsus, who plants himself as the strongest trainer of black and white. Arvin's final team is up next, and then we have Professor Kukui's Incineroar team, followed by Hop's post-game Zamazenta fight at number <laughs> you have a zamazenta and you're still that low that's tough oh well, i suppose sony is that. dude the zarsian team is gonna pop off i bet if the zarsian team wins that'd be so funny team we no you know what it's gonna be bloody mustard isn't it because mustard is a, has an urshifu and if i've learned anything recently about bgc and pokemon competitive it's that if you have an urshifu you will win it's not even a question you have to win. We have the highest ranking Gen 5 trainer, which is Iris's Black and White 2's champion team. Next is Kukui's Decidueye team, followed by DLC Kieran. Now, ah, oh, I hoped Kieran would be a little bit higher. Don't get too upset about this next placement. I'm preparing you because the number 16 spot is going to platinum. Was he talking to me directly there? That's getting a little bit too meta. Why is he telling me not to get disappointed? Did he, can he, can he hear me? 
Cynthia's champion team. Now, wow, is Cynthia a little low, guys. Both of Cynthia's platinum teams are the one with Toga Kiss, but the rematch team after Stark Mountain has a noticeably better learn set, and you'll see it rank a little higher up. Now, from here, our top 15 sees the remaining trainers share a ton of overlap teams. Dude, it's gonna be mustard, isn't it? Mustard's gonna win because he has freaking out. You've got all three of Nimona and Leon's teams. I want Nimona to win because I really like Nimona as a character. I don't care about Leon at all. So whatever, Leon, don't care. Plus the Mustard single and Rapid Strike variants. Yeah, and there so we go. So to make this a little more epic, we're going to list it in order of top five based on the trainer's highest performing team. This way, I can give you, ladies and gentlemen, Oh, it's time for the top 10. Here we go. The objective top 10 strongest trainers in the Pokemon franchise. Let's Here do we go. this one more time. This is science based. Professor Come on, Nimona. Squee's only team to break the top 10 is his Primarina based champion team, and it did so just barely placing at number 10. Kukui is the highest ranking trainer from the Gen 7 games. Now, at number 9, we have Drayton. Not oh, dude, I forgot about this guy. He's, he's pretty good, though. I struggled on this battle, I lost in this battle when I played the DLC. So I think this was the only battle that I lost on. So respect to him. Drayden, who was a new face introduced in Gen 9's DLC. He's a dragon themed trainer with exceptional coverage and typing, and of course, ridiculously strong Pokemon. Leon's Italian team placed next, but since it's the lowest of his three placements, the number eight strongest trainer is going to post game hops Zacian team. Oh man, he's getting so hard carried by Zacian. It's not even funny. And this is surprisingly the highest ranking team that has a legendary on it. It's also worth noting that Hop's Zacian team has fallen quite a bit from its previous rank at number three. Now, next up, ladies and gentlemen, at number seven, we have Cynthia's post Stark Mountain Platinum team. So this shows that Cynthia on, is Nimona. no longer the strongest trainer, but it does prove that the old Pokemon games can contend with insane power creep. But that's not it, because it's really really important to note here that the only teams that rank higher than Cynthia are from Gen 8 and 9. Which oh, dear. yeah, yeah, it's it's Nimona, it's Mustard, it's... Well, we already saw Kieran. Who is even left? Which means that up until 2019... Oh, Seda and Churo. They're also left. I don't think Volo is Legends Arceus teams in this. Platinum Cynthia was the strongest trainer in the series. This means Cynthia held the title of strongest trainer for 12 years. To me, That's this respectable, is Cynthia. the most impressive ranking. Also considering that Volkner and Lucian had top five ranking placements, this goes to show you how good the trainers of Platinum truly are. And lastly, I will say, if you're curious as to how Cynthia's brilliant diamond shining pearl teams would perform, you should subscribe because <laughs> we're going to do that. It's, it's like kind of funny how many subscribe plugs there are in this video. Soon. We're going to do a video where we simply take the top 100 strongest teams ever, including remakes, post game, and tournaments. And that will include things like modern day Red and BDSP Cynthia. Now, the next team in order is... No, Nimona. Oh, I thought she'd be a little bit higher. Meowskarada Nimona, followed by Leon Rillaboom. But the title of sixth strongest trainer is going to Ameris. Oh, oh okay. So Nimona is actually higher. Dude, Ameris is... I did struggle on this fight. I didn't expect it to be this high. In the hidden treasure of Area Zero, this is the highest ranking Gen 9 DLC character. And armed with this cracks. Dude, she has a dog tree on her team as well. Set of steel types, I'm really not surprised how well she fared. Now, in order, the next team is Nimona's Quackavale. But coming in at number five, we have Champion Leon's Cinderace team. Yes, Nimona at least beats Leon. Not a Leon fan. Which is actually a little shocking considering he has two fire types, but at the same time, I don't think any of us are really that surprised. Leon is just a notoriously strong champion, and this is a solid play. Yeah, I mean, if you look at this team, what is Seismitoad doing on that team? I love Seismitoad. I think it's a brilliant, but what are you doing on this team, mate? For him. Also, technically, in 2019, his debut was the first character to ever beat Cynthia's Reign of Supremacy. Now, the fourth strongest trainer in the series is Nimona running her Skeledurge team. That makes I sense. That's actually really exciting. I'm, I'm happy for her. Find this Dude, that means there's only the professors, mustards, and who, who, who is even left after that? Uh, okay, I've, if I had to make a guess, I don't think the professors are gonna be. Oh no, it's, it's just the professors are mustard. Oh my, it's dude, it's gonna be mustard. It's 100% gonna be mustard. Her lower base stat Pokemon. It's 100% gonna be mustard. With quick attack, this is an exceptional performance. And if it wasn't for the fact that she has the best starter in the series, I would not understand this placement. Now, coming in at number three, 
we have the reigning champion oh. from our previous ranking video, Muster. His Rapid Strike Urshifu team just bested the single strike, but overall, oh, dude. this team held up. Wait, so we have two and one left. There is two left. Yeah, it's it's Seda and Shiro. Oh my god, really? I didn't think Seda and Shiro were that hard. Well, considering who ended up beating him. The second strongest trainer oh! in the Pokemon franchise is Professor Seda of Pokemon Scarlet. Back to the brim with insane ancient really? paradox Pokemon. It's no surprise that this team did so well. High stats, a ridiculous- I guess the overall group of stats, they're all 570 base stats, which is really good, and they all have really good moves. And also, Roar Moon has 590 base stats, so it kind of makes sense, right? An amazing which means Shiro wins. Seda an absolute gnarly fight. And she probably would have placed here in the previous video had we not forgot to include her. But ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> topping out the charts as the strongest trainer in the Pokemon series. Rocking Iron Moth, Bundle, Hands, Jugulus, Thorns. Yeah, it makes sense. He's got that trim too. And he's got Iron Valiant. It makes sense. Iron Valiant. We have the future is now, old man. Professor Churro of Pokemon Violet. Anyway, thanks the for AI the take over. through. Please subscribe and go check out Opera GX. It's Damn, that was really good. So Churro is the unequivocally, scientifically proven, if you're all level 50, strongest trainer in the entire franchise. B -b Wolf of VGC always be my goat. <laughs> anyway, go and subscribe to Smith Plays. Smith Plays, they'll be uploading a new video based on the strongest teams from all of the trainers if you really want Cynthia to win that much. And you can always subscribe here if you want to see more of my dumb face as well.